Anime Recap here. Today I'm going to explain an action-adventure fantasy anime called The Boy and the Beast. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the flourishing land of Jodenkai, home to a hundred thousand beasts, its longtime lord is finally retiring from his post to reincarnate as a god. But he's bidding his time, still in the middle of deciding what god he will be. Everyone is certain that Ayazen will be the next lord, a man of fearless and valiant character. He is the master to several apprentices and the father of two sons. By contrast, his rival, Kumatetsu, is rough around the edges at best and crude, arrogant, and selfish at worst. Because of this, he lacks both a son and any sort of pupil. Without either, how can he possibly hope to beat Ayazen? With unkept hair and a surly face, nine-year-old Ren is much too alone in the busy streets of Shibuya. The passing of his mother left him alienated from the world, seeking and resenting his father, who's nowhere to be found. Consumed by his own anger, he refuses to live with his relatives and runs away. Wandering aimlessly around the city and seeing children happy with their parents only fuels his anger. With the anger burning in his throat, he empties it by shouting that he hates everyone. The people around stare at him, coaxing him to walk away in shame. But as Ren goes, he leaves a dark construct of his likeness in his wake. It repeats his words, saying, I hate them, again and again before fading away. One night, Ren takes shelter in an underpass while his new companion, Chico, lives rent-free in his hair. Chico is a small, white creature that he met in an alleyway and offered it food when he had barely any money left. In the same underpass, a clothed Kumatetsu walks along with his companion, Tatara. Jokingly, Tatara suggests that he could take in just anyone or anything as an apprentice, even a broom or a human. Kumatetsu takes a liking to the idea and stops in front of Ren. He pesters the boy, asking about his mom and dad, until Ren threatens to kill him if he keeps talking. This is when Ren notices that Kumatetsu looks like he's never heard of shaving cream in his life. Oh, and that he has a suspicious snout and unnatural red eyes. Ren's bravado fades, and he realizes that he's staring at a beast in its face. Tatara urges Kumatetsu to go, but before he does, he offhandedly offers Ren to go with them. Though the encounters left the boy stunned for several moments, he soon snaps out of it and chases after the two beasts. The commotion catches the attention of some cops, spurring them to chase after the lone boy. He enters a bizarre alleyway, which eventually leads him to a place filled with all kinds of beasts. Scared and anxious, Ren scrambles around the land of Jutenkai, running and crawling in absolute fear until he gets picked up by a trio of wolf-like beasts. They play on Ren's fear of getting his hide sold or eaten until Hyakushibo stops them. Hyakushibo introduces himself as a monk in training and assures Ren that he has nothing to worry about. Kumatetsu shows up with Tatara, happy to find that his choice of apprentice made it to the place on his own. Ren is just as surprised as Yakushibo was to discover that he's now Kumatetsu's pupil. But the beast doesn't discriminate. Ren can be a toilet brush for all he cares. An apprentice is an apprentice. He then leads him back to his home, much to the dismay of his concerned friends. Since Ren is unwilling to give him his name, Kumatetsu starts calling him Kyuta which is a pun on his age. The next morning kicks off with the two fighting over raw eggs. Kyuta refuses to eat them, then refuses to be Kumatetsu's apprentice before taking off. While he's in hiding, Kyuta spots two children by an ice cream stand. They are revealed to be Ichirohiko and Jiromaru, the sons of Lord Candidate Ayuzen. Soon, Ayuzen discovers that Kumatetsu's apprentice is a human, and he quickly grows apprehensive. He worries about the darkness that grows within humans' hearts, and he tells Kumatetsu to let Kyuta go out of fear that the child will grow to be a monster. Because of Kumatetsu's stubborn and unyielding nature, Ayazen yells at him to cut Kyuta loose for the sake of Jutenkai. Of course, Kumatetsu doesn't take well to his demand, resulting to a fight between them. It's clear from the get-go, Kumatetsu doesn't have any vocal supporters among the crowd beyond Tatara. In fact, he manages to turn the entire crowd against him with his lack of battle etiquette. After a rough start to their match, Kumatetsu begins to gain the upper hand. After bulking up and growing in size, just as Ayazen did, Kumatetsu manages to push Ayazen back, cornering him. With the crowd cheering him on, Ayazen lets the voice of love take him higher. This helps him push back against Kumatetsu until he falls over. While watching the fight, Yuta notices that nobody's cheering for Kumatetsu, 
making him realize how alone he is. He ends up cheering Kumatetsu on and encourages him to keep fighting. Aizen manages to send Kumatetsu flying just as the Lord of Jutenkai finally shows up to stop the fight. Still unable to get up, Kumatetsu gruffly asserts that Kyuta will remain his apprentice no matter what. The Lord allows this and takes responsibility for whatever may happen. He tells the incredulous Ayazen that not all humans possess the darkness that he keeps bringing up before finally dismissing everyone. From then on, Kyuta agrees to become a Tetsu's apprentice as long as he one day becomes as strong as him. The first day of their training ends in a failure. Kyuta is unable to replicate Kumatetsu's actions and Kumatetsu is unable to teach. The most concrete instruction that he could muster is telling Kyuta to grasp the sword that's in his heart. When he realizes that Kyuta can't even grasp his instructions, he walks out on him. At one point, Jiromaru and his posse end up cornering Kyuta, who he calls a monster. The beatdown is cut short by Ichirohiko, who convinces him that a weakling like Kyuta can't possibly become a monster. That stings, but at least he's helping him up. Ichirohiko refuses to show his abilities off, but it's not out of humility. He is determined to follow Ayazen's every word, believing that doing so will help him become a powerful swordsman with a long snout and great tusks one day. Upon Kumatetsu's return, he and Kyuta are plunged straight into another argument. He calls Kyuta pathetic, which he admits to, but not without calling Kumatetsu out on his own pathetic ways, especially compared to Ayazen. Kumatetsu chases Kyuta around the house, but that doesn't deter him from continuing with his barrage of insults. One night, Yakushobo tells Kyuta that the reason behind Kumatetsu's rough and messy technique stems from being self-inventions. He grew up without a parent and a master, forcing him to learn independently. Meanwhile, Kumatetsu finds himself bothered by his shortcomings as a teacher. Though Tatara believes that Kyuta should just bug off, he still advises his friend that he should think back to how he started and what he needed as a child to understand Kyuta better. While playing around with Chiko the next day, Kyuta heard the voice of his mother telling him to be your master, do as he does. And while he isn't sure where the voice is coming from, it still comes as an epiphany to him. The following days, Kyuta starts to imitate everything that Kumatetsu does, especially his footwork. This irritates Kumatetsu at first, but when Hyakushibo explains that Kyuta's just like a baby trying to learn from his father, Kumatetsu warms up rather giddily to the idea, even deliberately gives Kyuta movements to copy. While Kumatetsu is minding his own business one day, Kyuta gives him a nice poke with his broom. He repeats the process until Kumatetsu retaliates and attempts to catch him. Much to everyone's surprise, Kyuta proves to be very quick on his feet. He can outmaneuver his master and telegraph his movements like it's child's play. After that, the two begin to train together and learn from each other. Kyuta learns the ins and outs of fighting both with a sword and a hand-to-hand, -hand, while Kumatetsu learns how to telegraph his opponent's movements and how to let these movements guide him. Kyuta reaches to a point where he can defend himself from Jiromaru, who now acknowledges his strength enough to befriend him. Time passes and Kyuta is now a 17-year-old highly skilled in the very different areas of combat. But he's not the only one who's changed. Throughout the years, Kumatetsu managed to develop a more refined technique. He even practices proper battle etiquette now. After seeing Kyuta's transformation, the townsfolks are lining up left and right to be Kumatetsu's apprentice. Still, they continue to squabble and bicker endlessly which usually ends up in their infamous chases. But one day, while Kyuta is running away from Kumatetsu, he somehow finds himself back in the human world. While he seems to be overwhelmed and ambivalent at first, he isn't opposed to be being back. He first goes to a library where he asks a girl to help him read the word whale from the book Moby Dick. Kyuta later saves her from a group of bullies and the two become fast friends. The girl introduces herself as Kaede and Kyuta introduces himself as Ren. She helps him read better and after seeing his willingness to learn, Kaede encourages him to apply for college. Despite his hesitation, Kyuta is open to trying and while he's taking care of his papers, he finds out where his father lives. Kyuta and his father meet purely by chance outside of a shop. There he discovers that since his parents were divorced, it took a long time before his father found out that his ex-wife passed away. After that, he looked everywhere for Kyuta, even when the police had given up. After their meeting, Kyuta finds himself at a crossroad with a path that he should take 
wondering if a normal life is even in the cards for him. He returns to Jitengal to speak with Kumatetsu, but he already beats him to the punch. Kumatetsu found one of his books under his mattress, and that's when Kita says that he wants to go to a human school. With Kumatetsu being as brash and hot-headed as ever, Kyuta walks out on him but not before admitting that he finally met his father and that he's just decided to live with him from now on. Kumatetsu tries to run after Kyuta, telling him not to go. Kyuta still leaves. Distraught by Kyuta's departure, Kumatetsu quickly regresses to his former self. Hyakushibo explains to Tatara how hard this is for him, especially when he's considered himself to be Kyuta's father in Jutenkai. But in Shibuya, Kyuta's father tries to make up for his lost time. He is willing to take things slow and follow his son's lead, but Kyuta's conflict within himself remains. After lashing out on his father, he walks away from him just as he did with Kumatetsu. Thoughts of his father in the human world and his father in the beast world plague him and soon, Kyuta finds himself in the same busy street in Shibuya, where he had his first outburst. There he finds the same dark construct of himself, still filled with hatred and resentment. When the construct turns to face him, Kyuta sees a hole in his chest before watching it disappear. He tries to look around for the darkness, only to find it in his reflection with the large, gaping hole where his heart should be. Terrified by what he's become, Kyuta runs away until he finds Kaede outside the library. Bit by the identity crisis bug, he asks her what he is, if he's human, a beast or a monster. She assures him that everything's going to be okay and shares that even she has times where her heart feels like it's filled with anger. Kyuta calms down and she gives him the red bookmark she wears around her wrist, hoping that it will help him just as it helped her. Kyuta returns to Jutenkai and Jiromaru invites him to his home, where he discovers that the fight between Ayazen and Kumatetsu is tomorrow. Ichirohiko shows up to escort Kyuta to the gate, and without any warning, Ichirohiko begins hitting Kyuta while insulting both him and his master. To his surprise, Kyuta sees the same hole in Ichirohiko's chest just before the troubled boy walks away. The event takes place in Jutengo's Coliseum, and it kicks off with the Grand Master making the announcement that we've been waiting for. After long years of thinking, he finally settled on being the god of decisiveness. Good for him! As soon as the match begins, Kumatetsu buffs himself up and starts his reckless charges towards Ayazen. Ayazen parries Kumatetsu's lunges with ease and quickly manages to down him with his sheathed sword. The referee starts counting down and as the rule states, if the candidate is down for 10 seconds, he loses. Kyuta decides to wait until the referee reaches 9 before finally deciding to make his presence known. Why the referee didn't finish his counting, we don't know. All that matters is Kyuta is there to give his second father some encouraging words. So naturally, he calls Kumatetsu an idiot and yells at him to get up. This lights Kumatetsu's fire right up, and they bicker back and forth again until Kumatetsu gets up on his feet with a mighty roar. The match continues and he's able to retrieve his fallen sword. With Kyuta guiding him and cheering him on every step of the way, Kumatetsu fights Ayazen with vigor and polish, eventually breaking the sheath covering Ayazen's sword and sending it flying, piercing the Grandmaster's chair. One last punch, Kyuta cries out, and Kumatetsu delivers. Aizen falls, unmoving on the ground, and when the tenth second passes, Kumatetsu is announced as the winner. The crowd cheers, but Kumatetsu's focus is fixed solely on Kyuta. They reconcile with a low five, and just when it seemed that things couldn't get better, well, they didn't. Suddenly, Ichirohiko uses his telekinesis to plunge Aizen's sword right into Kumatetsu's back. He gives an unhinged spiel about winning the battle with his power and his father's sword. All while the hole in his chest reveals itself, a dark construct of his hand forms around the sword's hilt. With the darkness from his heart, Ichirohiko plunges the sword even deeper into Kumatetsu's back, making him fall. This sends Kyuta in a flurry of rage. His own darkness shows and through his anger, his sword unsheaths and comes flying towards Ichirohiko. Chiko is quick to direct Kyuta's attention to his wrist, where he sees Kaede's red string wrapped around it. This snaps him out of his trance, and the sword falls right before it could hit Ichirohiko. With the darkness fully consuming him, he disappears while Kyuta passes out. After some time, Kyuta wakes up to find his heavily injured master still unconscious. Meanwhile, Aizen reveals that Ichirohiko is actually human. He found him in the human realm, abandoned in an alleyway as a baby. 
Aizen took him in and raised him as his own. But in doing so, he gave his adopted son the false hope that he will one day be like him with his long snout and mighty tusks. Ichirohiko began to doubt himself and what he even was as he grew up, letting the darkness fester within him like an untreated wound. Kyuta overhears this conversation and resolves to pursue Ichirohiko, despite the protest of Hyakushibo and Tatara, who have both grown to care deeply for him. But Kyuta makes it clear that he's not out for vengeance. Instead, he feels responsible to save Ichirohiko from his darkness because it's the same one that lives inside him. The only reason that he didn't turn out like him was because of the ones who took care of him and for that, he thanks Hyakushibo and Tatara. He leaves Kumotetsu in their care before returning to the human world. Kyuta meets up with Kaede to give her his copy of the Moby Dick just in case anything happens to him. Ichirohiko shows up, still with the large, dark hole in his chest, and begins to chase after the two. The two engage in a short-lived sword fight as Ichirohiko proceeds to attack with enlarged arms instead. This sends Kyuta flying and Kaede helps him up so they can leave the area. Ichirohiko picks the discarded book up and reads the word whale from it before tossing it aside and leaving. As the residents of Shibuya go about with their lives, they spot the huge shadow of a whale on the ground. Part of the shadow takes a solid form like Ichirohiko's enlarged arm did, causing a number of cars and trucks to crash into one another. Kaede takes Kyuta's hand and escapes with him through a subway. Left with no other options, Kyuta decides that the only thing he can do is to use the emptiness inside him to take in Ichirohiko's darkness and seal it away, a plan that will ultimately result in his own death. Back in Jotengal, the still injured Kumatetsu insists on helping Kyuta no matter what. It turns out that Kumatetsu wants to be reincarnated as a god, surprising the other beasts. But because Kumatetsu is now the lord of Jotengal, he can and without any shred of hesitation, he will do it for Kyuta. Kyuta and Kaede find themselves near the National Gyoyogi Arena before arriving to a dead end. Ichirohiko is hot on their heels, appearing behind them as soon as they stop running. The two of them try to run away, but the projection of the whale keeps blocking their path. Kyuta moves Kaede out of the way, then stands before the whale, opening up the vacuum in his heart to take in Ichirohiko's darkness. But just as the vacuum was beginning to absorb the dark energy, a flaming blade lands between the two of them, stopping the whale in its tracks. Hyakushibo, Tatara, and the other beast of Jutengal are there, and Hyakushibo explains that the burning sword is the reincarnation of Kumotetsu. He wished to be reborn as the soul that's in Kyuta's heart. This is in reference to what he told the boy when they first began training, telling him to grasp the sword that's in his heart. The sword fills the hole in Kyuta's chest, and he begins to shed tears as memories of his master plays in his head. But because he and Kumotetsu are one now, he can still hear his voice coming from inside him, telling him to stop crying. With unwavering resolve, Kyuta gets ready to end the battle. He charges forth with his unsheathed sword, and with one fluid motion, he and Kumotetsu manage to defeat Ichirohiko. The construct of the whale disappears, and Ichirohiko passes out. Kyuta removes his makeshift bracelet and wraps it around Ichirohiko's wrist, saying that the both of them are one and the same. They are raised by beast and the children of the beasts. After some time passes, Kyuta stands alone on top of the building where he banters lightheartedly with Kumatetsu, who is now a voice inside of him. With a content smile, Kyuta tells him to keep quiet and watch what he'll do from there. In the Beast Kingdom, they're holding a celebration for Kyuta's victory. Kyuta decides to go through with the application and live out the rest of his days in the human world with his father. Kyuta never picked up a sword again. Still, there's no stronger swordsman than him for he carries the sword that is Kumatetsu in his heart. While Chiko watches Kyuta study, the voice of his mother can be heard, saying that she's so happy for him. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.